Hi, Rod Kane here from the Washington Grand Company. Um, today's episode is going to be a little bit different because we're going to talk about mesh wash. So I'm here to talk to you about Triumph, uh, my favorite ancient and medieval game. But today, instead of looking at miniatures and the game table itself, we're going to go to the computer and talk about MeshWesh. MeshWesh is an online resource. Um, it's a free resource available to Triumph players and non-Triumph players. And it tells you how to build an army um, for Triumph. And we're also going to spend a little time as we go to MeshWesh on the Washington Grand site and showing you some of the other resources that are available to support the game. So I hope you'll uh, uh, tag along with me, uh, take a look at MeshWesh if you ever, haven't already seen it. I think you'll find it's a great resource for uh, playing the game. And it's also pretty good resource for just historical uh, army collecting and information in general. So thank you for watching. Okay, so here we are at the computer. Uh, typed in Washington Grand Company. And we're going to pull up that page. And here is the Washington Grand uh, home page. Uh, nice picture of the cover of the rules. Obviously critical links like where you can get the printed version, where you can get the PDF version, uh, scale creep miniatures, War Game Vault. Uh, today we're going to talk about MeshWesh. The primary purpose of this video is to discuss the Army List uh, database, which is online. But I also want to mention there is a link to a forum here. So if you've got questions about the game, this is a great place to go. Uh, although the Facebook page is also very active, so another great place to go. Um, this is also where you can get that quick reference sheet for setting up the Triumph Battlefield for the 48-point uh, uh, standard game. And this is also where you can get that quick uh, reference sheet for the actual gameplay, which has the uh, combat tables um, and the information you need typically during the course of a normal game. It's, you can pretty much play the game from these two sheets once you know the rules. And uh, there's also some rough draft on Grand Triumph and some other information will be put up here from time to time. So this is a great resource site for supporting the game. Let's talk about MeshWesh. MeshWesh is the Army List Explorer, as we call it. Um, there are 659 armies and counting. Uh, uh, the armies are uh, uh, categorized into thematic categories for ones that fit into those, but you can search any army you like. So for example, if you type in R-O-M-A-N, you'll get every different version of Roman and Romanian army, uh, any army that you can think of. We can type in hop. So let's go to our later hoplite Athens. That was the army we were playing around with the other day, uh, or one of the armies, one of the versions. So what do you have on the army list? You have the year that the army uh, is effective for, the invasion rating of the army, the maneuver rating, which we talked about in our setup, the home topography. So if these guys are fighting somebody and they are being invaded, then they would fight in arable terrain. The troop type for the general stand, elite foot or heavy foot. Uh, we're going to get back to the battle cards in a minute. There's army battle cards and there's uh, battle cards that affect the units on the table. So it will list you the troop types that are available to the army and the required min and max for that troop type. So some armies have a minimum requirement. So if you want to make a later Athenian hoplite army, you've got to have at least eight stands of heavy foot. You could have as many as 15. Uh, you could have a stand of elite foot, which would be your general stand if it was um, in the army. Uh, or you can have uh, the general be a heavy foot. Uh, you got to have at least one rabble. Uh, that's the light troops that we're supporting, maybe throwing javelins, maybe throwing rocks. You'll notice that there's also a little bit of a description under each type to give you an idea of what figures to use for modeling that particular uh, unit. And then maybe some troops that are optional based on the year that you're deploying the army within the general category of the army. Uh, allied contingents. So if you had some allies available, this will click you over to the army list of what would be available to put in as an allied contingent. And so that's another advanced uh, section in the rules. 
And then a really handy reference is resources. So let's say I really want to collect some later Athenian hoplites, but I also want to collect the opponent for them. Um, this will list the most common enemies of that particular army, so I can go right to that list as well, and I can build a list of uh, for the enemy army that would fight against my hoplites. Um, so that's really handy. Um, it also has the thematic categories. So in the beginning you saw a page that listed all the different thematic categories. And so if you have a category like the Hellenistic world, you could just go in there and say, well, I really like this time period, this era, I want to build a campaign around it. What are the armies that kind of fit into that theme? And that's also available off the front page. So going back to these battle cards, um, oh, and by the way, it even has a little handy, uh, if you want to switch it to uh, Grand Triumph, uh, three commands, uh, it'll automatically set it up so it tells you what the triple-sized army would look like, or a double-sized army if you want to play with different, uh, different sizes, um, but the, the, the main one is uh, the 48 point, that's what, it'll, that's what it'll default to. So Standard Triumph defaults to 48 point uh, min-max. So um, what are these battle cards? Um, battle cards are something that's uh, in addition to the rules, um, they're going to be published uh, as physical cards, but you can use them now. Uh, and what they are, they come in kind of, um, I'd say, I'm gonna generalize them into three categories. Hoplite Deep Formation. This is a battle card that actually affects a physical stand or unit on the table. Um, so, we have heavy foot, we have elite foot, um, and heavy foot under normal conditions fit a wide uh, category of different troops from different time periods. But there was a time period when the hoplites would have been considered fighting in a deeper phalanx formation. So rather than have a specific formation uh, or specific unit type for just that period of time when they fought in this particular formation, um, we call them heavy foot because it fits most of their performance in our rule system, but for this to represent this deep hoplite formation during this time period from 371 to 225 BC is how this is actually applied. Um, there's a special modification to the rules that allows them to get rear support even though they're heavy foot, which don't normally get rear support from other heavy foot. Um, for this particular army, there's no cost for this. This is a free army ability so long as other conditions are met. And it's a continuous ability that that unit would have throughout the game. So it's got the rules change, that's the modification of standard rules, the timing of the card, and the cost of the card. Um, so that's a type of battle card that affects a particular unit, the heavy foot and the elite foot. Hold the line. That's a battle card that's available to this army, and this one is actually a rules change where you can use this card to stop a unit from charging forward when you don't want it to. So we mentioned the other day in the combat uh, sequence that if you double an enemy in combat you charge forward even if you would not normally have charged forward because you're not knights, you're not a, a, uh, an impetuous troop type that pursues. So the timing of this is um, after you make your combat result um, you can apply it before the next round of combat to stop a unit from going forward in the battle line and thus holding the line in a uh, formation. This can stop uh, units from getting into trouble because they're winning and they're going too deep into the enemy formation and you don't really want to do that. There's also army battle cards. So we'll look at this one here, pack trains and herds. In the setup I mentioned that when you have a camp it has to be deployed in the center of your uh, battlefield behind your main line. Well, if you have the pack trains and herds a card or ability available to your army, for one point, you can spend one of your 48 points on this card, and this will allow you to deploy the camp uh, in a different location on the battlefield. So the camp um, doesn't get to move during the battle, it's still a camp, but that camp is a little more mobile than your traditional camp, and you're allowed to put it on uh, the edges of the battlefield um, and it also changes slightly the time when you would deploy the camp during the, the setup. So it's, it's a card to let you protect your, your camp a little bit more, maybe put it in a little more secure location if you're worried about it. Um, and uh, that's called Pack Trains and Herds. Another example, this is a fortified camp. One point, uh, it increases the defensive capability of your camp should it be attacked. So these are army battle cards. 
It tells you when you can use them. Um, and then these are battle cards that tend to affect the performance of the units on the table. And this site is called Meshwash. This is the home page for Meshwash. Anybody can access the site. Um, 659 armies and counting. Uh, it's a pretty exhaustive list. And thematic categories. So if you're interested in a particular time period, it'll give you an idea of what armies would fight in that time period. And then it also has a really nice description of the troop types. So um, this will tell you in detail what the different troop types are in the army. And I am going to do a video, as promised, on the troop types and go over a little bit more uh, what the different troop types are and why they're categorized the way they are in, in Triumph. But this actually has a really good discussion if you'd rather read about it instead of uh, listening to me talk. So once again, my name is Rod Kane. I'm with the Washington Grand Group. The game we're playing is Triumph. I really appreciate you watching, and I hope that you'll uh, take time to go out and look at Meshwesh. Uh, I think it's a great resource for the game, and I think that it's also a really great resource just for ancient and medieval uh, war gamers in general. So thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next video.